on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Live over Zoom is one of our favorite people. He's itching to get back in here. The head coach of BYU men's volleyball, Sean Olmstead. Sean, welcome back to the program. I wish we were discussing a win, but I am interested to find out how you cope with the loss. Do you go for a 50-mile run and, and get it out of your system? What, what happens? No. Yeah, uh, I stay up late and uh, made a nice scramble of sausage and eggs and cheese uh, at about midnight last night. So that's how I dealt with it last night. But in the past, it's been, you know, maybe therapeutic to get out and get on a long run. But uh, no, it's a uh, start to the season. Tough loss for the guys uh, here at home. But um, here's where we're at. We get another shot uh, tomorrow. So uh, we've got to we've got to rebound and and be be ready to get in the gym today, practice and discuss some things, some tough things, and then go forward and get ready to compete. Nothing's normal in 2021, but uh, three starters out for UCLA, and obviously Will Stanley at setter was a big one. Wearing masks, no fans, or limited to family. It was all just kind of weird. But uh, what was it like in that match to try and try and get uh, Zio Meyer and the connection with the hitters as best you could get it? Yeah, that, that's exactly what we were doing. You know, a young kid, freshman, put in that circumstance and and he's a kid that uh is you know pretty mature beyond his years you know very experienced and um you know uh, for whatever reason we we just couldn't get our offense going in reality we passed really really well and so that that was tough and uh it's some things we've got to work with him watching film slowing things down a little and discussing things maybe a little minor change here or there but um you know we kept trying to get things going and and it when it wasn't it just kind of was a snowball effect and 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 had a bigger impact on the rest of the team and 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 the rest of the things we were trying to do and we saw that and so it, it was kind of uh, all credit to UCLA because they they picked up on that they kind of ran with that energy and that excitement understanding that we were still trying to find things uh on our side of the net to click our way there's a storied rivalry with you, UCLA and BYU in volleyball. Does what happened last night add another chapter to that? Does does this is this a good thing for this rivalry moving forward? Well, yeah, because I believe I believe any time that we can play UCLA is a great thing. I mean, really, you know, um, we're fortunate that, that they're they're always a, a very competitive top program outstanding coaching staff great players and so we we uh that's been you're exactly right that's been a very heated rivalry you know going back to carl mcgowan and al skates and those are those are stories that will be told forever <laughs> and uh, some of the best stories uh the best stories around but um maybe for another date and another segment but um, and that rivalry continues. You know, we're both bringing the best out of each other, and you want that. And uh, I'm, I'm absolutely okay with those kind of matches being the opener for our guys. And uh, last night we, we, we were a little shell shocked, and and the shell shocking kind of continued. And we saw that where we just, just couldn't. We struggled to find that rhythm and get back on. Uh, where we needed to be and so hey it's a learning experience for our guys and opportunity and we definitely have to respond differently and better uh, collectively as a team for tomorrow night and that's what seems like the good news in this this wasn't the MPSF championship match in April this was the very first match of the season so if you're going to learn some lessons obviously you learn them early and then you you peak later so what is it that you feel like you can learn from this experience, not only to be better on Saturday in match two, but to make sure you can get to Columbus in May? Yeah, that, that's exactly what the goal is, you know. And so uh, we want to be in a position where we're playing the best volleyball we can be playing uh, into the end of April and into May. And we believe that as a group, that if, that if that's the case, we're going to be in a really, really – uh, good spot to compete and so um, you can throw around and sometimes coaches throw around the, those things oh, it's a lesson learned it's good this or that but in reality if we don't make changes then then these become tough losses and and we're just kind of spewing things and saying things to check a check a box in the corner and that's not what we want to be you know are we really really going to learn something and take some value out of this 
and be able to, okay, make changes, respond to changes, respond to, uh, to the coaching, respond to your teammates. And if we can do that, then yes, lesson learned and, and we're okay with that. You know, uh, very few teams, no, no team's gonna go through the season undefeated. We understand that that's not a goal. That's not what we're reaching for. We're reaching for being in the moment learning. And so if we do that, then then uh, then we're in a good spot and we constantly discuss that. So if we can learn from this, there's a lot of value to gain and, and be able to come back. And, and tomorrow is going to be uh, a good oppor opportunity for us to see if we've learned something and, and, and are moving on from it. BYU head volleyball coach Sean Olmstead, part-time Ironman with us on BYU Sports Nation. Coach, what's the plan for Will Stanley and his return? Because we know what an incredible talent he is at setter, and you obviously missed him last night. Yeah, um, we're he's still working through that. Um, uh, just kind of an uh, he had an ankle sprain. It was the week be uh, in the week leading up to this match, and so we've. We uh, have a great medical staff, and we trust their judgment. And and Will's Will's a tough kid, so Will Will would have wrapped that thing up 20 times and gotten out there. But we have to understand that this is the start of the season. Let's be smart about um, that that ankle fully recovering. Uh, let's let's take it for that. And so we'll continue to go down and and check on things and figure out. Uh, where we believe he's at, he'll he's been you know getting reps in practice, very light ones, and so we'll we'll see. And so there isn't a perfect timetable in these situations. Um, if this was a game that we were playing for the MPSF championship, even last night, if that was the MPSF championship and the national championship, Will would have been playing. But um, considering the timing of everything and that we've got a handful of months ahead and that's what our our ultimate goal is then we're going to we're going to be smart and work with our outstanding trainer Blaine Blaine MP and and the medical staff that we have and we'll make good decisions there. The Pac-12 has asked its teams to play in masks and then to have the opponents play in masks even on the road and a week leading up to that. What was that like to do that because uh like we talked about next week with Pepperdine that's not necessarily the case for the players on the court when it's a non-Pac-12 team this year, right? Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we started doing that. Uh, we had to start uh, a week ago today um, and mask up all the time. Our, our athletes, as are all the athletes at BYU, are, are masked up in the situations that they need to be, but uh, are allowed to practice it without masks, are allowed to do things in the weight room without masks. So that was that was an adjustment. But um, uh, it's it's kind of the reality of uh, do we want to play volleyball games or do we not? And we want to play, and these guys want to play. And they put themselves in a, a position to to play and compete. And so if it means that we've got to wear a mask, then, yeah, we've got to adjust a little. And it's it's different. You know, you see masks halfway down the face. Others are over here on the side of the – it's it's all over there. And uh, so w we want to play, and, and we're going to follow – the rules that they have because that allows them to come to Provo and play. And so we've just got to do it, but it, it is different. Um, we try to take more water breaks, give them a little more, uh, catch their breath and uh, kind of go from there. Coach, uh, you have taken on the immense challenge of a weekly podcast with Jerem Jordan and Steve Vale. How do you feel about this <laughs> new project? <laughs> I'm I'm excited because I think uh, I think the world of both of those guys I think they do an outstanding job in their preparation, in, in their insight. You know, Steve's a, a classic guy. He's usually, anytime he's on a Zoom call, he's sitting in a car, whether he's driving or not. I don't know how the guy just <laughs> finds himself sitting in parking lots all over the place. But uh, um, no, I, I think they do. There's so many. There's so much history and so many great stories in our program that I'm excited to, to be told. So uh, I'm just I'm just honored that I get to be a small part of it. But so many of my teammates, so many of the alum, uh, you know, this it, it, it's rich. We're talking about Super Bowl ties. Man, the ties that men's volleyball has uh, go go into the Olympic Games, into overseas and into so many so many different avenues. So it's exciting that we get to maybe learn a little more about those things. Keep that top button loosened whenever you're recording with those guys, and it'll all be okay. It's on the radio. That's not a problem. <laughs> <I'll win. laughs> Sean, I'll great win. to talk to I'll you, man. Win. Let's give you some karma for matchup number two against UCLA. Good luck on uh, Saturday. Thank you, guys. Thanks. You Always. Got, you got it. Sean Olmstead on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. So 60s.